Let's talk about food and food plays a key role in our mental health and well-being throughout the lifespan during childhood and adolescence and our adult years. Studies show following a healthy eating pattern can reduce risk of depression and anxiety and dementia and other common conditions like diabetes. Getting the right amount and balance of nutritious foods are important. And research is showing that a healthy diet is protective and an unhealthy diet is a risk factor for depression and anxiety. There now exists compelling evidence for nutrition as a crucial factor in the high prevalence and incidence of mental disorders, which suggests that diet is as important to psychiatry as it is to cardiology, endocrinology, and gastroenterology. And there's some exciting research showing randomized control trials called the SMILE study, reporting that one third of participants that had depression in the study after they followed a healthy eating pattern, such as the Mediterranean style of eating, a third of the participants reported resolution of those symptoms of depression. So how exactly can diet affect the brain? There's several theories and one is around neurotransmitters, that the foods we eat provide nutrition and nutrients to build or make the neurotransmitters, such as serotonin and dopamine that impact on our mood and mental health. Other theories are on reducing oxidative stress and reducing inflammation in the body, as well as uh, providing those building blocks for brain cell membranes, such as omega-3 fats, which are highly prevalent in brain cell membranes. In addition, another theory is around receptors, as the gut has many, many uh, receptors for serotonin in the GI tract. So what does a healthy brain diet look like? Diets that are healthy for the heart are also healthy for our brains. So those are eating patterns that are rich in plant foods, such as fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, legumes such as peas, beans and lentils, whole grains for fiber, fish as a source of omega-3, as well as dairy products such as milk, yogurt and cheese, and healthy fats such as olive oil. Brain healthy diets are also low in unhealthy foods such as processed or ultra processed foods, fast foods, and sugary foods. So one style of eating that's showing benefits on brain health is the Mediterranean diet. And there's a snapshot here, a picture of the foods that are included in that style of eating. And to the right side, you'll see a list of 12 questions. These are things that are components that are part of the Mediterranean diet. And so you can actually go through that list and give yourself a point for everything you can say yes to. So the Mediterranean diet is quite high in healthy fats. You'll see question number one is, I have four tablespoons or more of olive oil each day. Um, you may look at Questions number three and four have to do with the fruits and vegetables. Number three is I eat at least four servings of vegetables each day with one serving as half a cup cooked or one cup raw. Question number four is that I have three or more fruits or one and a half cups of fruit each day. So you can see this is quite a high um, intake of fruits and vegetables in this style of eating. The nuts, they often recommend three or more times a week. That's what's in question five. Fish, again, is something that's recommended several times a week. That's question number six. Uh, number, question number seven is related to the legumes, three or more times a week. Um, and number questions eight and nine have to do with um, the amount of meat sources and animal protein in the diet. Um, and again, the questions go on down to number 12. And so this is a good little self-assessment. The goal is to get a baseline score to see what your score is out of 12, and then pick one or two areas you may want to work on to be able to raise your score a little bit. As I mentioned, this is just one style of healthy eating that is showing benefits on heart health and brain health. So the Mediterranean style of eating is quite rich in fruits and vegetables and plant foods and whole grains. So of these three pictures here on this slide, which meal is most similar to the Mediterranean style of eating? Is it the one at the top with the waffles, bacon and, and fried eggs? Is it the one at the bottom left with cantaloupe and peanut butter and banana on rye toast with a cup of coffee? Or is it the meal on the right side with cereal and toast with jam and juice and a coffee? If you've guessed the one on the left side with the whole grain toast and banana with a cantaloupe, that's correct because that is the meal that has more whole foods, more real fruits with fibers versus the meal on the bottom right is more um, fruit sources of juice and jams, which is much higher added sugars. So let's do a little true or false quiz. And you can, um, you know, if you think a statement is true, you can give it a thumbs up. If you think a statement is false, you can give it a thumbs down. 
So is this true or false? We can rewire, rewire our brains and change how we think, feel, and behave. Well, this is exciting to actually know that this is true. Our brain is composed of billions of cells called neurons that are constantly sending and receiving information and creating pathways in our brain as we learn. And with different strategies, we can begin to change how we think and how we feel and behave to create new pathways in the brain. And this is a concept called neuroplasticity. So this is a very useful um, strategy to help change some of the behaviors we may want to be modifying, such as perhaps as our eating behaviors or activity behaviors, etc. Here's another true or false for you. Dehydration can affect my mood. And that is also true. It's very important that we stay well hydrated because even mild dehydration can impact on our thinking, our mental health. We may see some fatigue, irritability. It can cause restlessness. It can also affect blood pressure. So we really want to be mindful of the amount of fluid we're consuming in the day. And on average, we need about 9 to 13 cups of fluid each day. Again, this will vary depending on the person and their activity level and their work or home environments. But on average, 9 to 13 cups of fluid each day each day. We want to avoid though fluids with excessive sugars or caffeine. And here's just an example of some of the fluids you might be familiar with. One is a cup of water with lemon. You can see there's zero grams of sugar there or zero teaspoons. When you look at the energy drinks, you can see that there's 36 grams of sugar or nine teaspoons of sugar in those drinks. And a regular Tim Horton coffee can have 24 grams of sugar or six uh, teaspoons and a can of pop can have 42 grams of sugar or 10 and a half teaspoons of added sugars. Those are some of the drinks we're trying to minimize those drinks that are high in added sugar or caffeine. What about this question? True or false? A slice of white bread and a slice of rye bread has the same impact on your blood sugars. Well, actually, different grain products can affect our blood sugars differently. And this is a concept you might enjoy. It's called the glycemic index. And this is a way of looking at foods and ranking them in terms of how quickly they raise blood sugars compared to a slice of white bread. So foods in the green column are what we call low glycemic index foods. These are the foods we're hoping people choose most often because they give the best blood sugar effects. Then the yellow column is medium glycemic index and the red column is high glycemic index. Foods in the red column may raise blood sugar to a higher level and have more of a negative effect on blood sugars. Foods in the green column tend to digest a bit slower, the sugars break down um, or break, are released from the stomach more slowly and you see a much slower rise and sustained energy with those foods. So a slice of sourdough bread in the green column will tend to give you more sustained energy than say a slice of white bread in the red column. True or false? Recent research reports that probiotics in fermented foods and supplements can improve gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, and mood. And this is also true. So there has been some very exciting research on probiotics showing that fermented foods may reduce anxiety, stress, and depression. So foods such as yogurt with live bacterial cultures, sauerkraut, kefir, these are foods that have wonderfully healthy bacteria in there that can actually improve our, our physical and mental health. There also is a probiotic supplement that's currently available. You may want to look through what our resource that we use commonly called probioticchart.ca. This is a resource that gets updated every year with the latest evidence on probiotic supplements and fermented foods. And they do have a probiotic supplement called Combiotic that actually has some evidence of benefit on mood. So again, exciting research uh, in this area. True or false, going too long without eating can make you feel drained, irritable, and bring on feelings of anxiety. And this is actually true as well. So we do want to make sure we're providing our body and our brain with energy every four to five hours. So when you eat at regular times, your body is getting glucose for your muscles and your brain to function at optimal levels. You also help maintain blood sugar levels so you're less likely to have a low blood sugar um, or reactions from low blood sugars. This helps to stabilize mood and can actually help prevent cravings and overeating later on in the day. True or false, protein and carbohydrates work together to boost serotonin levels in the brain, 
which helps with mood, sleep, and feelings of joy. And this is actually true. So you can see here from this list, different nutrients are needed to make different neurotransmitters. So at the top of the list here where you see serotonin, some of the key nutrients to make serotonin are tryptophan, which is an amino acid, which is in protein, glucose, as well as vitamins B6 and B12. And those components are needed to make serotonin. And serotonin is very important for mood and emotion regulation. And if you're deficient in serotonin, you may notice symptoms of low mood, difficulty sleeping, uh, low um, pain inhibition, and not feeling having feelings of joy. And likewise, with some of these other neurotransmitters like dopamine, we need the amino acid tyrosine and vitamin B6 to make dopamine. And dopamine is very important for motivation and also for managing cravings. Now, it's important here that amino acids and protein are very important for making neurotransmitters, but so is carbohydrate foods, as you can see. So we do want to make sure our meals have both of those components because too little carbohydrates. So if someone is avoiding things like fruits or milk or yogurt or whole grains, you may notice effects on your mood, things like feeling a bit cranky or constipated, and you may find it a bit harder to think, work or exercise. So when we're looking at meal planning, we really want to try to aim for a balanced meal. And the picture on the left actually shows you a plate where we're trying to aim for vegetables and fruits at the meal. We're trying to have the other side of the plate being one quarter of the plate protein foods, um, as well as the remaining quarter whole grain foods. So we really want to make sure that those protein foods are there at the meal because, again, protein and carbohydrates do make these neurotransmitters. So we're aiming for at least a quarter of the plate to be protein or the size of your palm. That's another way to estimate your protein serving. Or if you're looking at numbers between 20, 25 to 30 grams of protein at a meal. And when you're picking protein, we encourage you to pick a variety of different proteins, both animal protein and plant protein. So foods like yogurt, milk, and cheese do provide us with vitamins D, B12, and magnesium. Fish, for example, gives us omega-3 and B12 and D and zinc. Poultry, eggs, those are some of the really good sources of animal protein. Then we also have some wonderful plant proteins, the bean family, legumes, which are peas, beans, and lentils, are a great source of fiber, magnesium, and potassium, as well as nuts and seeds give us some of our healthy fats, our vitamin E, and, and minerals like selenium. So true or false again, salmon is a good source of omega-3 fats. It's a healthy type of fat that reduces inflammation and is associated with lower rates of depression. And that is in fact true. Omega-3 fats called EPA and DHA in particular, these are animal sources. It's called epipentanoic acid and dexahexanoic acid. These types of fats are found in fatty fish, certain cold water fatty fish, things like salmon and trout and mackerel. These are the fish we're encouraging people to have two or three servings a week if they can, if they enjoy those those sources. If someone is switching to more of a plant-rich diet and, and wanting to pick a plant-rich source of omega-3 fats, they might be picking things like walnuts or flax seeds or omega-3 eggs where they fed flax seeds to the chickens and in this way their level of alpha linolenic acid would be higher and that is another type of omega-3 fat that's a plant source. Another question for you, is vitamin D a common deficiency in Canada? and has it been linked with increased risk of depression and bipolar disorder? It actually has been linked with or associated with depression and bipolar, low levels of vitamin D, and it's quite a common deficiency that we see here in Canada because vitamin D is quite limited in our food supply, really only available in fish, and it's added to fortified milk. We do get vitamin D from the sun, of course, in the summer, but if we're wearing sunscreen to protect our skin, it's hard to activate the vitamin D in the skin. And so for that reason, Health Canada has recommended that all Canadians supplement with vitamin D3 every day. And for adults, we generally recommend 1,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily for adults. For kids and infants, we recommend lower levels. And vitamin D is turning out to be an amazing vitamin. It's involved in so many systems in the body. And one system it's involved in is the dopaminergic process and reward system. So when it comes to substance use and alcohol use, there has been some exciting studies showing that supplementation of vitamin D may protect against the dopamine depleting effects of drug and al drugs and alcohol. So again, nice to see some of this new research coming forward in that area. 
What about B vitamins? Deficiencies in B vitamins like vitamin B1, B6, B9, and B12 are common and linked with increased risk of depression. And that is also true. Vitamins, uh, B vitamin deficiencies are very common, especially in substance use disorder, and are linked with increased risk for depression. And so for everyone, we do recommend healthy eating to get those uh, B vitamins from your food sources. And if you're concerned that you may not be getting enough from food sources, you may want to supplement with a multivitamin and mineral supplement once a day. And if you have... Um, you're managing alcohol use or drug use and you're trying to uh, reduce that, you may want to consider B100 complex daily, which will give you additional vitamin B1, which is known as thymine, um, because that is so easily depleted with daily alcohol use. What about magnesium? Magnesium is an important mineral for sleep and the production of brain neurotransmitters. This is also true. So magnesium is important in many different functions in the body for bone health, muscle function, and it's an enzyme cofactor for many pathways. And so it's very important that we get magnesium rich foods every day and pumpkin seeds in particular are quite high in magnesium. But you get magnesium in a variety of foods as you can see here, things like nuts and seeds, leafy greens, some of our whole grains like quinoa. And deficiency in magnesium is turning out to be more common than we had previously thought and that can be related to changes in our dietary intake if we're not consuming some of these foods. It can also be related to medication interactions. For example, water pills can affect magnesium loss in the body. And so medications uh, may be another consideration when you're thinking about magnesium needs for an individual. As we mentioned, alcohol and drug use does have an effect on your nutrient needs. It actually increases your nutrient needs because um, alcohol and drugs can affect the ability of the gut to absorb nutrients. In addition, um, you may find you're not hungry when you're having alcohol or other drugs, so it may displace healthy foods, you may not be eating as much, and that can lead to malnutrition and multiple nutritional deficiencies. And the research is showing that malnutrition can actually promote drug-seeking behavior and impede recovery. So very important that um, if you're trying to make changes in this area, that you reach out to your family doctor or, or nurse or dietitian to have further discussion of what might be helpful for you. So to give you an overall summary of the key nutrients for optimal brain health, we want to focus on protein sources um, at all of our meals to provide those amino acids, tryptophan, tyrosine, glutamine, that make these neurotransmitters. We want to make sure we have carbohydrates at those meals as well because that works together with protein. And we want to choose carbohydrates that are low glycemic index. They absorb very, very slowly. They don't raise the blood sugar quickly and they tend to give more sustained energy. We also want to make sure for our brain and heart, we get those healthy fats, omega-3 fats, and what we call monounsaturated fatty acids as well. And in addition, some of the key vitamins that are important for brain health include vitamin C, vitamin D and E, the B vitamins, and in particular B6 and B12, as well as minerals such as magnesium, zinc, selenium, and iron. And of course, we've talked about hydration and the importance of water every day. So to summarize, healthy eating helps you feel better, provides you with energy, can improve things like your blood pressure, blood sugar, and reduce risk of heart disease. It helps to stabilize your blood sugars and your mood, and may reduce the risk of depression, anxiety, and disordered eating. But healthy eating is more than just what to eat. It's also about how we eat. It's important we take time to eat throughout our days, eating slowly and thoughtfully and enjoying the foods that we're having. We want to eat without distraction so we can pay attention to what we're eating. And we want to eat with others for that social engagement. And of course, very importantly, to improve those cultural and food traditions that matter so much. Another way to improve mood is with routine. So our bodies and our brains love a schedule, the predictability of a schedule. Daily routines can help reduce stress and decision fatigue over wondering what to do because we're in, if we get more established in a routine, it's just less decisions to be made. So we really want to ensure that we have time to rest and, and provide self-care, time to stay active, time to sleep, as, as well as time to eat regular meals. 
And it's important for when you're really, really busy or feeling stressed that you have a plan in place for what we call 911 meals, those quick and easy, fast, healthy meals that you can grab and go that give your body and brain the nourishment it needs to feel its best. So try to plan for a balanced meal if you can, the idea of half your plate, fruits or vegetables, a quarter protein of the plate, and a quarter of the plate starch. And you might want to have a go-to list on your fridge, just a quick and fast, easy list of things that you can quickly put together for a quick, healthy meal. It can be from canned tuna or salmon with mayo on whole grain crackers and a few raw veggies to whole grain toast with peanut butter and a banana. And lastly, here's a slide of resources for you. If you do have questions about your nutrition, we encourage you to reach out to your family doctor or your dietitian if you have one. We do have dietitians here at the Hamilton Family Health Team, and you're always welcome to email us here if you have nutrition questions or concerns, and we're happy to point you in the right direction. As well, dietitians.ca and unlockedfood.ca will provide wonderful nutrition information. This is two websites created by the Dietitians of Canada, so very good resources there. And Dietitians of Canada also has a wonderful site for recipes that are quick and healthy and easy called cookspiration.com. So on that note, I'd like to thank you for your attention and encourage you, if you have a nutrition question, just ask a dietitian.